we'll go again. There we go. I'm just going to go straight into the live. Okay. And I believe we're live. Two seconds. Yep, we're live. Mm. Alright, good evening everybody and welcome to another edition of the Big Mad Vape Show with myself, Shane, from Big Boy Builds and Reviews. As usual, we've got Michelle number one above me, <laughs> Mad Hatter Vape Reviews, and tonight's mostly weighted uh, special guest. We have the lovely Michelle Lynn from Dull Dime Mods. So Hello. If anybody has any uh, moddy type questions, then that's the person to ask them to. So, let's start with the normal. How's your week been? What are you vaping on, Malarkey? You really want me to go through all this? <clears throat> yeah. Right. Week, hay fever, shingles, that's that bit over with. Mods. <laughs> Finally got my hands on the nunchucker off the husband. So I've now got that. I have my Rage. And I have my Mech. And I have the Breeze 2. And I have the Swarin Drop. So I have a few to choose from. That's a bit of a plethora for you for a change, Michelle. It is, it's because they're all on the desk today for a change. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how's your week been, uh, Michelle? What are you vaping on? I think I think you might need to say double L. Yeah. And L. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll just, just, I'll just be L and she's double L today. I'll just say Compton. I'll call her Compton. I'll, I'll call her there you go. one of the two. Go with Mad Hatter, that's yeah. easier. Um, Hatter. Um, what am I vaping on, right? I'm vaping on... Whoops. Almost spilled the crap out of that. I'm vaping on my, my DIY e-juice, which is Clove. Uh, and this, is what I'm, this is what I'm mainly vaping on. This is one of my mods. Um... Uh, TM24 Pro um, from Twisted Messes, and, I, and, I, and it's a great atomizer. I would highly recommend it, but just know that if you get it, you may not use your other Addies for a while. It's one of those. Um, and then I'll show off more of these during the the, the show, but yeah. uh, that's unregulated. Show off um, as many as you like. <laughs> yeah, and then for mouth to lung, I have some, uh, I think it's Angel's Breath. From hometown heroes, Saltnick. Uh, so it's a it's an over a hundred dollar hundred dollar Jesus Christ, over a hundred year old tin uh, with an old K Fun four. It's my old school vape. And this guy with a with a this this is supposed to be the bottom to a uh, one of these old uh, Wismec tanks, but I took it apart and I use it as a dripper, and uh, it's really good. And it's inside of one of my uh, it's a wood mod that I made out of mahogany. Anyway, nice. that's good enough. There's other stuff on the table, but <laughs> what have you been vaping on, Shane? Me? Right. I'm on my Pulse Volga Sorry. With a dead rabbit. I've got some of my uh, homemade custard in there. Uh, also on the Rage with the Nudge 24. Nice. Um, and I've got some hod from Viking Juice in there, which is an after eight type mint flavour. Um, Vape Siege Creator IM200, I think this one is. DNA. No, this is the uh, their own chipset. This one. This is the. Oh, that's the, but it yeah. uses that that box. Yeah. That same kind of design. Yeah. yeah. They, okay. But they do do one with a DNA 75C in it as well. Yeah, um, I just recognise the pattern. Yeah, um, I've got the Coil Art Mage V2 on top, and in there I've got some Vanilla Shake from who's that one from? Monster Shots, I believe that one is, and I've got my Surin Drop as well with some uh, Vanilla Nick Salts in it, and that's about me, I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. Normal week as always. Busy building coils day in, day out, day in, day out. Um, uh, Who's sound needs turning up? Everyone's or just mine, Ian? 
Wait for an answer. While we're waiting for an answer, I can't believe that Redbeard. He's been forced to take down his uh, YouTube channel for vaping because he's a teacher, and they've said that it embarrasses the school because it's unhealthy to promote unhealthy stuff. <laughs> okay. <What? laughs> speechless. That's an absolute <laughs> joke. Absolutely speechless. What you do in your personal time has nothing to do with them for a start. No. And the yeah. fact that you're vaping and not smoking, well, there you go. Yeah. Good, I remember walking past the school staff room and all you could smell was cigarettes while they were all in there smoking. Yep. Uh, is the sound any better now, Ian? Are we having testicle problems? No, nah, it's probably just my sound as normal. Mine's always crap. True vapors. Hi, Chris. Good evening, Chris. We call him uh, UK Chris or other things in our Discord group. <laughs> yeah, it gets a bit confusing because we I know quite a few Chris's in the vapor. Yeah, industry. yeah. We, we have our Canadian Chris, which I never call Canadian Chris because he doesn't like it. So he's our original Chris. <laughs> you know. He's the OG. Yeah, he's the OG. <laughs> Exactly. Overdrip is, is is our OG Chris. Good evening, Bob. <laughs> Ian, that that's uh, the air gap problem with the microphone. Yeah, m my, it's not a very good microphone, to be fair. We always have issues with your microphone. We do, we do. I keep meaning to get some. Uh, <coughs> well, try. Po have you tried pointing it at yourself? Yeah, I've tried it all different angles. And and nothing. Okay. It doesn't seem to... Uh... I mean, you sound fine. X1, yeah, if, he, if he sounds okay now. How's that, anyone? Is that any better? <laughs> I'm not shouting, yeah. Ian. I can't tell if Ian's trolling you right now, though. Yeah. I mean, it always is a little bit quieter than most people's, because it's just how it is unfortunately well everyone's x1 so it sounds good right. yeah okay. we're good we're good right. good we'll try it like that then and hopefully it, it stays that way for a bit no doubt it'll cut out every now and then as normal yep so what have we got to talk about tonight we've got any top any any topics anyone wants to to get into uh, people suck <laughs> um, vaping's awesome. Music rules. Nah, we're done. Later, everybody. Yeah, I can certainly agree with the first comment there. I think a lot of people certainly do suck, to be fair. <coughs> Especially who doesn't enjoy music. Yeah. I think all the people at my doctor's surgery certainly suck after today. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, it's too late. Hey. At least you went. Oh, I was. No. I wasn't going to. I wasn't, I wasn't going to bother. So you guys want to explain to a dumb American vaping in the UK right now, where you guys stand, your issues, things like that. Like just obviously summarize it. But to be fair, at the minute, I, I think it's not bad over here right now. Um, things seem to be moving in the right direction. Um, there's a lot of support from the NHS and things like that, so it's certainly going in the right way. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, I was on. Uh, I guess it's okay. You guys are hopefully friends. I was on SAS the other day. Oh yeah. And and we were talking about you know UK versus uh, America and 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 what leaving the European whatever the fuck it's called, uh, but how you, you had to keep some of these TPD rules even though, you know, you're dumping, you're dumping, uh, what is it called, please? I know it's EU. Brexit, but, EU. yeah, you're dumping the EU, basically, but for some stupid reason, you have to keep the, you know, those, it's like, it's like your healthcare wants you to vape, which is awesome, but their laws are, whatever. It's just, nothing ever makes sense no matter where you go. 
you know, it's just as fucked here in the U.S., but for different reasons. Mm. My argument with 10 mil bottles, right? Considering yeah. have children. This, yeah, you buy it zero nick. But you and see, those are the ones with the shots that you yeah, have to do? Yeah, which okay. are the same size as these. But if you add a nick shot to that, that is going to be more potent if your kids get hold of that than that. This, they can slip in their pocket and you won't notice, versus this, that you're going to surely notice if they've shoved it in their pocket. Yeah, and that shot is probably like a 100 milligram uh, uh, nicotine or whatever, but it's it, that'll make them sick as a dog. 20 milligram nicotine, 10 mil bottle. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, 20. Yeah. But still, that's a lot for but a kid. But the point being is, if you see a kid pick this up, you're going to notice. If a child picks something like this up... Yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't even make sense logically. No, it's not really that. Banning the big bottles, uh, banning the small bottles, and then keeping the big bottles. Mm. So in in the U.S., all of our politicians are basically owned by someone. They're owned by you know big pharma usually, maybe big tobacco. But uh, do you have that in the U.K.? Do you feel like your representation is is bought off? Mm. I don't know really. It's a bit 50-50, isn't it? Because yeah. you get so much going t towards it, and then you get so much going against it. Yeah, it's a strange one, because I know, you know, a lot of the, the tax and that from the big tobacco companies and everything does go into the National Health Service. Um, but then on the flip side, mm -hmm. if the majority of people wasn't smoking, they wouldn't need that money to deal with smoking-related illnesses. So it's... It's 50 of one and 50 of another, I think. Yeah. Um, as I mean, going back to the 10 mil bottles, the amount of of waste that they're producing is unreal. Yeah. Um, and I know there has been talks of um, going away from the 10 mil bottles once we do fully leave the EU when Brexit actually happens next year. Um, I think I... I was talking to someone, they were saying that they were going back up to um, a maximum size of 30 millilitres on the shelves again. But will it have nick in it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 30 mil with nick in, like, you know, like the normal dripper bottles used to be over here. Yeah. yeah. Um, but still, it's less waste, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't know where it'll balance out. It'll get a little complicated because they're smaller bottles, but at least you don't have those, you know, concentrated nick shots yeah. you know, for the kids to grab. That's so. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really, I don't really use them anyway. I, I buy the, the normal nicotine and, and use that personally to keep it out of the way. Um, but I don't have little children, so it's. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just getting fascinated by how many Michelles we have in this right now. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a few. There's a few. <laughs> Michelle B's in in as well. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's funny, like, of all my friends, I think I only have, I only, like, know really two other people with the name Michelle, you know, but maybe it's more popular in the UK. I mean, Jesus, you did have the Beatles singing about it. Yeah, it's quite a, quite a popular name over here. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Pop Patel. How are you doing this fine evening? Hey, folks in chat, do you have any questions about mods or me? Or, uh, yeah, we can answer Reverie qu questions, because I don't have one, and uh, I would love to talk about it, because that's my buddy Stan. Oh, I'm loud? Yeah, so I can just, I'll just adjust the levels of mine. Okay. Is that Sorry about Mr. that. Nichols? Oh, you got the reverie, Mr. Mike Mex, you lucky devil. What do you think of it, Mike? I'm always, I'm always quiet, Grimmy. You know what my microphone's like. Google is your friend for 72% of the Nikon. It certainly is. There's plenty of places you can still get it. Village Vapor asks, Michelle, what was it that got you into building mods? Um... I think there's a lot of things. I, I, I'm a tinkerer at heart. Um, you know, growing up when my sister was hanging out with my mom shopping, I was hanging out with my dad in, in the garage, you know. So I have like this big foundation of just like 
I just used to love working on things that might pop. And, uh, um, you know, vaping, I didn't start vaping to build mods. I started vaping to kind of chill out. I used to smoke um, cloves. I never smoked, like, regular cigarettes. I only smoked cloves. But, I mean, they're clearly not good for you. Um, so I vape clove now. But what got me into the mods, I think, one of the factors is kind of like a survivalist um, instinct. Um, with all the, you know, rules that have been coming down the pike for vaping, I, I just, I don't want vaping to go away and me not have vaping. So I, I've kind of put myself into the position where I make my own juice, so I'm self-sufficient there. If, the, if they make getting nicotine hard, I'll figure out something. I always do. Uh, and then the mods. I build my own mods so that, you know, like, I have, here's like one of my beater mods. You know, this is like, I, I built this little puppy, but um, it was just, you know, so I would make sure I had a vape. But then somewhere along the way, I started thinking about making them in tins. And the first one I made was uh, 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 one of these. It's not this exact one. It's uh, similar to this. And Grim Green has that now. Um, being drop. I should, uh, sorry, man. I hashtag knee pads. Um, but I just really liked that, and I liked I liked the response that I was getting. You know, people were were, were you know interested because I, I particularly liked it. It's like this. It's a very old school kind of way to vape. You know, and uh, and it's a great vape too. And if and if your chat your chat people for those of those of them that know me well enough. Yeah, I am. I am definitely right now. Anyway, let's see. Yeah, I don't think you can beat the, the bait you get from a unregulated mod. Honestly. Oh hell no! You know, and it's, I was talking to someone in our uh, Livia, in our in our I think it was Livia, in our in our Discord group yesterday, and it was like for some, or maybe it was Kimmy Bates, I forget. Whatever. Um, for some reason. My brain knows exactly when my batteries get to that point. You know, for me, it's like under load around 3.3 is when my vape starts getting crappy. And it's like I open up my mod, you know, and I'll fire it. I have a meter in this one so that I can actually see, like, what I'm getting. But it's, like, always 3.3. You know, that's when my batteries come out. So it's like, you know, do you really need, you know, all, the, all that digital stuff? No, you don't. You really don't. That's it. I mean, when... When you vape on mechanicals all the time, you, you're knowing yourself. As soon as you take that hit, you're like, "That's not quite there. It's not quite in the spot." Yeah. And as soon as you get that, just whip them out, chuck a new battery in. Yeah, exactly. And but you find that that point for I think most people, it's like every time they go to replace the batteries, it's like they're basically pulling that battery out at the same voltage. You know, yeah. on a mech or whatever, it's probably about the same voltage because it, like, it's like your brain's just like, time to replace it. Yeah, for me, it's around three points. Paper swaggins! <sighs> that's uh, one of my brothers from another mother. Yeah, swaggins, that's <laughs> off um, the Omis one, and that's off the Omis. Yeah, the um... The Omis, that's the one. Yeah, the vape stew... Um, has this, uh, you know, had a Facebook group and it was really good and a lot of people, like we all, we became kind of tight and then uh, I guess it was uh, a Demo, Demo Vapes, um, he, I guess he had this Discord actually for a while because I remember him posting links and just not getting around to clicking it but I finally did and it's like we just have this really strong little family of vapors mm. and, you know, we have each other's backs and what, you, and uh, you know, we're constantly like you know, hey, let me send you this juice, and then they send you this, or I send, you know, you send. I'm not using this Addy anymore, or whatever. And it's it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Mm. Well, I think that's what vaping should be about, really. You know, if if you've had your enjoyment out of something and it's no longer in use, then pass it on to someone. Let someone else get some enjoyment out of it. Yeah, exactly. Like the thing that I hate the most, and this this is, in, you know, including with my own mods. If I make you a mod, use it. Take it everywhere. Destroy it that because it's a mod. That's what it's for. Don't let it collect dust on a shelf. But I mean, I'm not a collector. Like I'm the kind of person that if something's not getting used, it really bugs the crap out of me. I've got a ton of mods up there that that I'm not using anymore, and I, I wish I could just give them to people. But and I eventually I will, you know. Yeah, well, it's like the mech that Michelle's using. I, I sent that one. I sent that one to you at, at Vape Jam, didn't I? Yep. I no longer. I didn't use it, so. 
Richard is it said, Michelle, do you use any mainstream mods? Um, yeah, I guess I do. Uh, I have my... <laughs> Sorry. You'll see in a second. I have I have my, my Hexome, but I forgot. This is my Daily Vape TV Hexome. You can see that. <laughs> we've, we've been fucking with Nick for so long. When are you going to do that, that Hexome, you know? And just so I was on, I, I don't know. It might have been... Uh, I think it was the vape still, and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell everyone this is what it looks like, and, and then I pulled this out with the post-it note on it, and it's still there. I, I don't know why. Just, I like it. It's funny. So I've got, I, I do have a hexome. I say, I would say that's pretty mainstream. Mm -hmm. um, I have, I was showing uh, the panel list before I, we, we went live. I have, uh, and, and, and look, people, I know, you're all gonna want one of these from me because, you know, it's a really fancy uh, mod. It's a hemo mod. My cuboid with, you'll see. Give it a second. I think uh, I think I'm at a, I think I ought to start putting those coils into production. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, if you if you can't find your lighter, <laughs> we, we vapors we have no shortage of coils and batteries, so yeah. make use of it. You'd be surprised. Livia, hey Livia. Wire for out of my out of my build stuff. Come on, let's see some questions in, from the chat. And and you know it doesn't even have to be vape related. You guys know me; I'll answer pretty much anything. He's usually not vape related when it's us. No, That's we, good. we, we normally, the benefit system. <laughs> we, we normally start off vaping, and it goes into all sorts. I think one week we even got into the benefit system, telling people how to do certain things, didn't we? And all sorts. <laughs> and if it's for life with Pete, it's usually motorbikes. So. We can talk about bikes. I hope you guys appreciate the fact that I have paused Westworld to come on here. Oh, uh, Yusuf, Yusuf, Yusuf Patel. Um, I'm sure I mispronounced your name, so I apologize for that. And uh, Westworld, it's it's really messed up, but basically everyone dies at the end. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm an asshole. I know. You don't have to tell me. Big Vapors is asked, "What are you bringing your music over here?" My music's over there. You just have to go find it. Uh, my album... Alright, so I'm going to go from my normal stoner self to um, depressing musician self. This is this is my album. That's my son. Last The last picture ever taken of my son. Um, and you can listen to this on iTunes, uh, you know, Spotify, wherever you, you know, listen to music. And so... Uh, it's Michelle Lynn with one L, the, and the album's name is Villa Mod, and it's 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 hard to pronounce and spell, but um, is it backwards for them right now? No, no, that's right. Okay, that's good. So that's the album. You can check it out now. You can also go to Bandcamp. Dot. I think it's like you no, know, it's like Michelle Lynn. Dot Bandcamp. Dot com. I think. Um, but uh, yeah, my music's there. The, the the album is something that I made. Uh, in memory of my son after he passed away four years ago, and uh, every song is about him. Um, I can no longer sing. I have scarred vocal cords, so um, I basically got a bunch of my friends to sing on the album, so every song is sung by a different friend, and, uh, you know, just between writing the songs and, you know, recording them with, with, you know, really close friends, it was a very healing process, you know, making that album, but it's, uh, any, any money that comes in from that album uh, all goes straight to the American Foundation for uh, Suicide Prevention. So uh, that's kind of, you know, I make mods and I give them to people for free. But, you know, these are my causes. You know, for me, it's, you know, it's my music and, uh, you know, suicide prevention. That That's what, um, that's what's really important to me. So I just totally brought down that whole conversation. No, Sorry no, about that. I mean, I, I completely agree. I mean, I, I do. I, when I when I get the chance to donate for things, I'll always donate to anything to do with mental health issues or and stuff like that. After you know, suffering with mental health all my life, so. Oh, then you understand. Yeah. For sure. Huge. Hey, uh, after we're done with this live video, remind me, and I will uh, I'll drop box you guys the album. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, mental health is a huge issue. Huge, huge. Bigger than people realise. Yeah, I, I suffer from 
uh, clinical depression, and uh, you gotta love what it does to your voice when you have like a like a lung full of vapor. <laughs> I sound, hold on, hold on. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I'm distracting myself now. So that's what the kids used to make me do. Mommy, mommy, speak, speak. No, no. Yeah. Thing is, it's even worse when you've actually got a naturally deep voice as well. <laughs> yeah, which I I, I heard you, my voice. I can't like uh, look look. You know, I'm like I'm like vape famous right now for 15 minutes within the the very like the small vape hobbyist world. But before that, you know, with music, I've I've had some success, and you know, so I've done like a bunch of radio interviews, and when I've recorded it to go back and listen, oh my god, it's unbearable. I fucking hate my voice. I think I sound like a man, and uh, it bugs the crap out of me. But I don't think anyone enjoys listening to themselves, do they? No, no I don't like the sound of my voice. You have a nice deep voice. You're a dude. Yeah. Michelle has a nice high voice. She's a lady. And I have this fucking mutant troll voice from, uh, <laughs> from fucking uh, Bilbo Baggins land. Ah. <sighs> Just but but I, I oh no I know what I'm gonna say I I so I suffer from depression and there's no doubt that my kids inherited it from me, um, and it's a serious issue that that um, you know people need to take seriously and I don't know about the state of mental health in the UK but in the US because uh, you know basically our health care is run by the health insurance companies who are interested in one thing and one thing only and that's to make money off of our illness, mm. which is uh, hopefully there's a special place in hell for them. You know, but they, but they, they kind of, uh, you know, poo-poo on, uh, on, on mental health a lot, you know, because they just don't want to pay. You know, they make it like it's not a real thing. But it's a real thing, and you want to know something? Mental health issues kill more people than heart attacks, so, yeah. And over here, it kills more men than it does women. Well, I think that's, I think that in general when it comes to, like, suicide in particular, the, 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 the oh my god, sorry people, the statistics are kind of worldwide that there's a fairly equal share of men and women that attempt suicide mm. but men tend to be more aggressive let's say with their method so they tend to have more success and that's the worst word to use there but I, I think you know what I mean mm. um, and so statistically there are more definitely more men than women that die of suicide but it's a, it's a serious thing and we, we, we all need to take it seriously and uh, just I don't know yeah, well, the and Dr. Will yeah. actually argue that it's hereditary, and it is hereditary. My whole family. My mom's got depression. My grandma yeah. has depression. They're just passing it down the line, you know. Yep. There and there, there is no doubt, you know. But it's like, but see, when insurance companies, you know, the the medical insurance companies, or when your doctors, as soon as they admit the truth, then it's like, oh, oh, we might have to start paying for some of this now. So. I mean, any any mental help issue is hereditary in my opinion um, well I mean you, you could have in theory body. like something brought on by trauma mm. but 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 more often than not there's an underlying component so uh, you know and then, the, and then who's to say if you didn't already inherit it like inherit the depression or whatever that when that situation came along maybe you wouldn't be in a deep depression from it you know who knows all I know is it, it, we need to do something the same mm -hmm. thing is, Mine got pretty good when I had my daughter and I got postnatal depression. Before that, fine. Yeah, and they when act like that's, that's BS. You're like, fuck that Tom Cruise. Remember that asshole jumping up and down on, on Oprah's cou couch? You know, like, dude, it's real. Let's see you squeeze a baby out of your penis. And let's see your depression afterwards. And then yep. we're going to tell you that you're fucking crazy, Tom Cruise. Yep. And meanwhile, you're, Tom Cruise is an asshole. Man, there was a South Park where they had Tom Cruise like packing fudge, so he was a fudge packer, and <laughs> uh, I was dying, totally dying. Yeah, I mean, it, it was earlier this year, I think, wasn't it, Michelle, when this morning did that um, thing on men's suicide, yep. wasn't it? That thing with the with the stat with the uh, statues. Yeah, and Professor Green, I know people you either love him or you hate him. He did amazing um, documentary about suicide because he lost his dad to suicide mm. and he yeah, I mean, the, the thing is with suicide I feel like um, when it's hit your family you know there's these changes that are made you know like some people that are ultra religious 
you know, like I actually went to seminary. I have a master's in theology, and I um, I lost God for a while afterwards. You know, after you know, how can you take my son? But then there's people that are not religious that become super religious. There's a lot of like flip flopping, uh, you know, that goes on when something like that happens. And and the scary thing is that when someone commits suicide in your immediate family, your chance of committing suicide goes up. I think like seventy five percent. So it's some. It might not be exactly that, but it's a scary number, you know. Uh, Lee says, I worked in care and I mental health first aid train. Uh, sorry, it's moving on me and I can't see it. So I worked you, in, the, in mental health first aid trained and even I lived with depression for a long time and I knew I was, but because of the stigma attached, it took me a long time to ask for help. And that's, that's, that's half the battle. I think. It is half the battle. It's because yeah. of the stigma that's, that surrounds mental health issues. Um, and I think blokes not not been not been funny, but I think blokes are worse at opening up about it than than women. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, for it's sure. Just not in most most men's nature to open up about things. Well, I think there's two components, though. It's like I think there's nature and nurture at play. I think women in general are better communicators mm. than men are. You know, I mean, and I think there's a very large biological component there. But but in addition to that. You know, we're raised that it's okay to cry and it's okay to express our emotions, and it definitely keeps you healthier because locking shit inside is never good for anyone. But with, with, with men, it's like from an early age, it's like, don't cry, don't complain, you, you know, and so, I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see what happens with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I was quite lucky in a way because my, um, my, my granddad always raised me and said that, it takes a real man to cry. Yeah, he always, exactly. He always raised me with that mindset, so I've never been bothered by it. Um, if I'm upset about something, I don't have an issue shedding a tear. I don't have an issue opening up as much nowadays. I used to struggle when I was younger, but I think it's something more that comes with age as well. Being more at ease with yourself over opening up about things. Finish Vapor says he thinks men have heard the term man up far too much and I've got to agree with that because yeah. when my son was 14 and he's on the autistic spectrum, he was having huge issues at school and at school pulled, the actual head teacher pulled him to side and went, Sean, you need to man up. Yeah. That's fucked up, man. That's and that is the day I took him out of school and I said, you're not going back. Good. You know, <laughs> you know but that, see, that's the problem. You know, whenever you have any kind of trauma in your life, any kind of mental illness, anything you're dealing with, the worst thing you can do is lock that shit deep inside because you know what? When you do, it comes out in different ways, and none of them are good. No, I mean I. You gotta, you know, get it out of your system. It's not gonna make it better, but 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 it'll help. It's it's you know, yeah. it's it's the direction you need to go. I mean I went. I... My mom attempted it twice. I'm so happy she never succeeded. She still has bad days. We are more tuned to the signs now. Yeah, Claire. I mean, for sure, you have to understand that it's not about you as well. I mean, your mom isn't doing this to you no. but with depression you get to the point where you just you cannot bear to live another day and uh, yeah and, and so when she gets like that you know honestly being impatient you know is again this is a this is a thing about tab you know, taboos and all that but being impatient being in a mental ward instantly means to everyone else that you are fucking crazy but you know what sometimes you, you need you need it sometimes you need to get your medicine adjusted and it's better to do it in an environment like that so um Lee, I'm sorry you had a... No, wait, not Lee. I'm sorry, I lost track. Who was I reading? Uh, Claire. Claire. Claire, Claire. Sorry, I apologize, Claire. But I'm sorry you had to deal with that and definitely, um, you know, keep keep an eye on it and uh, do what you can for suicide prevention in general because the more money that we can get into mental health care, the better. Um, Same as plug now. When my husband opens up the online vape shop, because he actually suffers with depression, with suicidal tendencies, and could possibly have a personality disorder, anything that's brought through the shop, the minimum of 10% is going to mind, which is our mental health mm. over here. Yep. That's awesome. Mind. That's that's amazing. You know, I mean, there's simple things you can do that people don't even realize. Like, uh, you know, I use Amazon Prime constantly. I'm sure you have that or something similar there, yes. but um, you can go to smile.amazon.com and what you can do is there's a it's like a maybe one percent whatever it is it's a small percentage but every single purchase you make and you won't pay anything more but a small portion of that is taken and put into your charity of choice you know for me it's the american foundation for suicide prevention but there are 
many charities that you can uh, do that with. And like I said, it doesn't co actually cost you anything. It costs Amazon money, and but the money goes to charity. So um, I don't know if you have it in the UK, but check it out, smile.amazon.com, and uh, pick a charity. I, I would enough. say it probably does work on Amazon because we use Amazon the same as you guys, really. Yeah, I use it. It's ridiculous how much I use I, it. I'm always using Amazon Prime. Yeah. Especially if I need something quick. <laughs> Use the prime delivery. Mike says, My headmaster at my first secondary school called me thick in a class. Needless to say, he wore my chair and had a bloody nose. I got expelled for that. Good on you, Mike. Yeah. I've had the pleasure of talking to Mike a few times now. Oh, Mike, you know, Mike's he's a, a good guy. Mike's, Mike's yeah. like a brother from another mother, as far as I'm yeah. concerned. He's a good guy. And I got to see inside Jay's... Uh, Shed. shed. Yeah, you can say shed on here. It's a fucking house. It's huge. It's not a shed. It's a freaking house. It's a big shed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's nicer than some people's homes. So I don't. I don't think I'll ever call it a shed again. But, and that's not true. I'll call it a shed just to get under under his skin. But yeah, I always do. And Mike, to be honest, I think schools have only got worse. Yeah. The bullying that goes on in schools and the teachers just turn a blind eye. And it's not just the children that bully now. The teachers bully just as much. Yeah. Really? Yeah, well, my daughter's dyslexic and she struggles. And she did a piece of work in year six over here. So she was, what, about ten? And she's also the youngest in her year group. Mm. The teacher ripped it out of the book, said that isn't good enough, screwed it up, and then gave it to another student to put in the bin. And I went down there and I went... I don't care if you said that's not good enough. If that's as good as she can do, that's good enough. Yeah, there you go, look. Uh, Pops has just said, uh, he's just checked on Amazon UK and you can do the smile.amazon thing. So, yeah, there you go. Anyone, awesome. Thanks anyone for doing in that. the UK can also um, donate to the charity of their choice through <laughs> Amazon. Yeah, right. like I said, it literally costs you nothing to do other than about 20 seconds of selecting your charity. Mm. That's, That's what you do, because you were constantly on Amazon buying something. Yeah. I mean, over here, you find that the teachers in school, um, they don't physically bully, but they're very, they're very, do a lot of mental bullying without realizing. Yeah, that's... And I don't think a lot of people realize what they're doing. Um, but I mean, I, I went through my entire education being bullied from the age of I'd say seven or eight years old all the way through to 17 um, yeah which led me down a wrong path um, yeah well dude trust me I, I'm a lesbian well mostly and uh, um, like 99 percent um, but yeah that wasn't an easy road you know yeah I mean it's I could, you know you know it's funny like with Facebook I literally have blocked pretty much everyone I knew from school because mm. fuck them, yeah. you know. I, have I did the same, and then they did a, a big reunion, and they were all on at me. Will you come? Will you come? I was like, I don't want to. I, I tell you what, they yeah. were my life. Why the hell would I want to see you again? Exactly. Like I never want to see you for the rest of whatever I have left. But yeah, oh my mm. God. I mean, my last action before I walked out of school was throwing someone through a window, um, and that was it. I never went back. Um, but of course the. The bully and I went through it. Yeah, but Mike, there's some. There's another topic. Mike, Mike's talking about you know not every child is the brain of Britain, but you know the thing is, uh, Michelle and I, I think we were talking about this yesterday for a little yeah. bit, and that is that um, everyone learns differently too. You know, you can have someone that's very intelligent, you know, maybe more on the art, not autistic, but artistic side, yeah. and so like our brains work a little differently. You know, uh, a left hand or right hand or you know, everyone learns differently. So to put everyone in. Uh, Michelle, what did you say? A square peg into a round hole for everyone. Yeah, everyone you know? gets pigeonholed. Yeah, basically. and that just that doesn't work. No, it's too many. I've got six children. I have one that's academic. Mm. One that goes to school, enjoys school, wants to read books, wants to write, wants to you know take all the information in. The rest of them, they want to learn by doing. They want to experience it. They want to do it. And at the end of the day, they don't get that at school. That's why I homeschooled my kids, because they just don't get that at school. They're sat in a classroom with 30 other students. They've got no personal space. They've got... The division is confined. It's like being a monkey in a zoo. And the classes are just getting bigger every year Yeah. in schools. People go, oh, my God, you homeschool. Your kids are going to be stupid. Oh, my God, you homeschool. They're not going to be able to get a job. That's not true. 
No. My son, who's coming up 18, even with his autism and all the bullying and everything else he's gone through in his life, he's got work ethic. And if he says, someone says to him, you do this, I'll pay you, he's there. Mm. Yeah. He, you know, he has no problem getting jobs. He works in a fish and chip shop for I don't know how long. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, so like, I, I not only pass down depression to my children, but I also pass down the artistic gene. You know, both of them, uh, my daughter plays bass, my son played bass. Um, they are both were good musicians. They're both incredible artists. Um, but uh, with that comes, I don't know. I, I, the majority of my friends in the Philadelphia area, which is where I live, are musicians. And it, there seems to be a connection between creativity and depression. Um, for whatever reason it is, it is. You know, but uh, yeah, I had a point and I've already forgotten it. So sorry about that. Well, I was... I was always very artistic. Um, and I think but I'm you quite, learn differently then. That's yeah, uh, that was my I'm, point of it. I'm I'm quite a, a bit of a stereotype, I suppose. I'm I'm left-handed. I'm creative. Left-handed. Um, you know, I mean, luckily, I I mean, I, I wouldn't say I wasn't academic. Um, I hated doing schoolwork and stuff like that, but I still learnt it. It. Once the sort of teacher went through it, it sort of stuck in my head, and that was it. I didn't need to revise it; it was in there. Yeah, um, like I get a lot of questions from people, like you know, they want me to teach them how to build a mod, or they want to know how I learned how to build a mod, and it, and it's just not it's not that simple. You know, a I don't want to teach anyone because I'm a horrible teacher and I have no patience. Um, but uh, I when it came to building mods, it's just I had a basic understanding. You know, growing up, you know, basically being my dad's shadow and. Uh, I just did it. You just do it. You try, and if you get stuck, you look up it on the internet. Where, what you got yeah. stuck on? I mean, just just do it. And and especially with like, if you're making a mod in a tin, that's not the time to teach someone how to make a mod. Mm. Honestly, you know. But uh, if you want to learn how to build a mod, I'm gonna gander to think that there are probably hundreds of videos on there YouTube, are, there's, websites, there's kits. Quite, there's quite yeah, I mean, of, come on. There's quite a lot of tutorials on YouTube regarding. Yeah mod building um, you've got some fantastic suppliers over here for all your parts um, at, at very reasonable prices as well oh yeah yeah I mean a lot of the parts that I use actually are from uh, mod makers in the UK yeah that's, uh, yeah, that's it yeah. yeah I mean is as far as I'm concerned I think is, is squonk 510 is probably the best 510 made first uh, uh, you know I, I tend to use Veritube on my mods <laughs> yep. but I and so <coughs> Um, and I know that, I don't know who gets along with who, and I know that not everyone gets along, but I just sent uh, Dean, the vaping biker, a dual parallel of Squonker I made, mm. and that one has a Veritube Squonk uh, uh, 510 on it, and, and it's, it's okay. I mean, I got it to work okay. I don't really have any problems with it. it it's doing what it's supposed to do, but uh, the next time I build a Squonker, I'm going to use the, the Mod Maker 510 for sure. Yeah, the, the voltage drop is, is so minimal on that Squonk 510. Well, the voltage drop on my mods is non is practically non-existent. Mm. Like, it, I cannot measure yeah. uh, without without load. I literally cannot measure the voltage drop. Mm. You know, uh, I was talking to to Mooch about this, and you know, he he said, yeah, you would need to get like one of these, you know, That's however like expensive. Telescope. Yeah. So. Yeah. Talking about mm. mods. Vaping oh. Irish. I just like that name. This is my art, Michelle. You ready to have a laugh? Oh, no. I'm looking away. I heard about that. Someone told me you make life like, you know, you should yeah. make that for, like, the movies. He even has hair. Wow. Did you do that? Like, did you, like, individually put hair on his head? Yep. That's patience. <laughs> that is patience. That's having six kids that gives you patience. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm old. I'm 48. I don't judge. You know what? If you like building dolls, that's amazing. Whatever makes you happy is okay. Actually, whatever makes you happy and doesn't murder anyone else. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Well, it would really make me happy to kill that guy. <laughs> Although some people, I'm sure, a lot of us wouldn't mind doing things to certain people. But yeah, exactly. But yeah, them. absolutely. That's awesome, Michelle. And that, that that it's it's actually a little frightening how realistic it is. Yeah. It's not realistic, but I had the police called. 
<laughs> you should take that and like play football with it like somewhere public and people people would just like lose <laughs> their fucking minds. They people would just, have already heard me say this. The husband wanted me to make one with a blood capsule in its head so he could drop it over the shopping mall. Tell you, you, you need to make one and do the <laughs> That's scene. fucked up. Do the but scene in a good of way. Uh, Cockneys vs. Zombies where he, where he literally drop kicks the baby out of the push chair. Yeah. I'm actually going to make a Mad Hatter one. <laughs> yeah. To sit in the background. At some point. Yeah, Matt, I'll agree. There's a, there's a few people on my list from over the years. <laughs> Thank you, Stuart. I appreciate that. But I'll, I'll, I'll get there. Give me nine years, I'll catch up. <laughs> so you're going to have to like go to outer space and go like the speed of light so you don't age during that time, and then we'll be the same age. Well, I'll be honest, I, I wouldn't have put you at 48. Um, I appreciate that. I'd, 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 I look in the mirror and I see someone who looks like they're like 110. No. I That's how old my soul is now. <laughs> I wouldn't have put you at 48. I'd have put you at low end, low end of the 40s. I'll take anything at this point. <laughs> no, you look—you don't look a day over forty-seven. Awesome. It's when I say to people, "I've got a grown-up daughter who's having a baby," and they go, "What?" Yep. Yeah. Hey, True Vapors, <coughs> you're in Discord, man. You know, you know what that there is a dull dime mod coming down the pike that you can buy. No, Alfie, you're not one. You're not on my shit list, dude. You'll always be special because you were my first ever customer to buy. Is, is, are we are we being trolled or is uh, Grimmy really twenty one? I don't know. No yeah. idea. Twenty one. You look back now and it's like, oh my god, I was a child. It's maybe amazing I even survived. You know? It's twenty one. Yeah. Mind you, at twenty one, I already had two kids. <laughs> Man, I have I have so much shit in my house that's like older than you are, Grimmy, so I mean I was twenty one, I was still in prison. Ouch. Yeah, <laughs> John, I feel the same way, dude. I completely relate to that. Yeah, that's that's a bit like me, Grimmy. I'm thirty seven but I feel about eighty seven most days. Michelle, I'll just say one thing. Still would. I seriously hope Americans don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> I've skipped past the husband. <laughs> now, which Michelle's he talking about, though? Well, it's got two L's. No, Anne, no. It's single no. L. No, it's got one L. <gasps> no, no, single L. Alright, wow. Nathan Irish, please explain, because I am confuzzled right now. We'll let Irish explain it, this should be interesting. <laughs> what, what I, and I will say this, that I know that you probably don't consider them, but like the majority of my friends are Irish. I live in a very Irish area in America. Mm. Uh, Joe McIntyre, I was in uh, Glen Parva Young Offenders, then I went to HMP Liverpool, and then I went to HMP we Wheelston. In Weatherby, over the two-year period. Did they not like you? That they kept moving you. No, we see. I started off when I first went in. I was twenty, so I was still in, in young offenders. Um, so I, I had to do four months in young offenders. Then I got transferred to an adult prison at twenty-one, uh, and then I did ten months in Liverpool. Um, and then by that point I was entitled to be recategorised so I managed to get my D category status to go to an open prison single L still wood is short for a shorthand for still wood bang yeah I sorry vaping Irish I don't mean to be an a-hole it's just I'm uh, a little inebriated <laughs> and having trouble following you He's right now. He's basically saying you're still doable. Oh, I'm still fuckable. There you go. Why don't you just say that, man? God. <laughs> Thank you, Vaping Irish. I really appreciate that. That looks very nice. He's had to say fuckable, that's all. <laughs> Someone's being polite. Yeah. yeah Which is not like Irish, because normally he says it as it is. Yeah. 
Yeah, my Irish friends say it as it is. I've got a friend who's a Scot, though. Don't ever cross a Scot. They will hunt you down. <laughs> no, for some reason, people find me scary. I'm not scary. You frighten the shit out of me. Are you kidding me? No, you don't. I actually, I, lo I freaking love your hair, though. Hey, well, it's like kind of for long. Yeah, yeah Joe, that's awesome. I um, I had a four-year sentence for uh, armed robbery. I would tap. <laughs> well, it depends. It depends, Grimmy, if you're a man or a woman. That that's the real question here, and I don't know, but I'm gonna guess. Dude. Mm, yeah, dude. Yeah, I know that because of what prisons he's been in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at your 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 incarceration. I re but yeah, that was funny. Take it, go away. <laughs> well, vaping Irish, I appreciate you being polite. That was sweet of you, but uh, I feel like I don't, I don't need the kick gloves with certain things. But I appreciate it. It's very nice. I love that. Good, good to know that I'm still fuckable. <laughs> so, because I'm not feeling real fuckable these days. I know that feeling. Uh, Joe, no, mine wasn't a bank, mate. Mine was a, uh, mine was a petrol station. <laughs> Man, there was, uh, that's a, I've just read a comment that was just so wrong in so many ways. But, so funny. Ah. Uh. What <laughs> passes for polite in Irish that, society? Do we have any vaping questions? Oh, good evening, Ryan. I didn't see you was in the room. Well, I did say hello. You just ignored me. Oh, Alan, uh, Alan came in all the way from Australia this morning. That was nice of you to join us today. Yep. Mr. And Alan. I promise we will do one at a decent time for you in the summer, Alan. <laughs> we will. We will. Hey, Joe, check out... Oh, wait, that's not Joe. I'm so bad at following this thing that's moving so much. Alan. Alan's the guy in, the, in Australia. Check out an artist named Elspeth Tremblay. Uh, originally, she was from, um, oh God, your capital starts with a C. Canberra. Um, Canberra, and uh, we even did a song about this. So I played for her. I played for her for about a year. Uh, she's in uh, Canada now, but uh, she's a great musician. She's Australian, and and that's why I have my crappy Australian accent when I want to. Clearly not now. Now I have a silly accent. Michelle B says, Michelle, what is your favorite e-liquid flavor? Okay, easy. Super duper easy. Clove. But it's my DIY clove, which I've now had a couple people try, and they said it tasted exactly like a clove cigarette, which is what I was going for. Uh, the other thing I've been vaping lately, because I suffer from migraines, is uh, a guy, uh, Mark, in our Discord group, uh, his juices, uh, the brand of the juice is uh, uh, Witch's Brew, which is, I love that name. But he sent me a peppermint vape for my headaches that it helps a little bit and uh, it's actually quite good uh, so if you get a chance check out Witches Brew Vapes I think they, they must have a website or at least a Facebook page everyone does these days I feel like mm. uh, but Michelle what are you what juice is your favorite actually both Michelle's what juice is your favorite oh that's easy dead man's arm yeah we know yours yeah. what yeah. is that what flavor was the flavor profile of it jam lolly poly and custard which is like a sponge cake with jam Okay. And then custard poured on top. So that, that's your all-day vape? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, she makes you, it Shane? like she's drinking it. Uh, yep. I'm, I'm a big custard fan. I, um, I do a homebrew custard, which I make myself. It's a take on a Grant's vanilla custard. Um, I vape that loads. <laughs> Uh, Michelle B says she likes summer fruits, and I don't know if that's an actual like brand or a name, or if that's just she likes you know fruit, you know vapes. Am I willing to share the recipe for for that clove? I'm not willing to share my particular recipe, but I'm willing to share a recipe that you can make quite easily if you would like. So let me know in the chat if you'd like me to do that. 
If I go out for a beer, the first question from my family friends is, Did you take your meds? Of course, drinking and taking your meds is not a great idea, but I do it myself, so I won't um, use it. Said, do you know what my favorite liquid is? And I'm guessing, Jules, it's going to be either frozen jizz or fizz jizz. One of the jizzes, Jules, isn't it? Because you love your jizz. She, someone in, in, in the chat just wrote, uh, is it frozen jizz juices? Yeah. No. Where is that? We have a juice over here called frozen jizz. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm assuming you're saying yes to sharing the recipe for the cloves? The fizz jizz. Fizz jizz. It's gorgeous as well. You guys want me to, you mind me or... Want me to share the recipe for for your chat, people? Go for it. Okay, so basically this is going to be the easiest way to do it. Um, Everyone get your pens and paper. Yeah, because I'll probably forget by the time <laughs> I'm done. I'm writing it down, so if they don't yeah. see it, I'll stick it in my group. Well, chat replay will be on anyway, won't it? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so here, here here's what you do. Go to Vaporfy. Um, I don't know if they have stores in the UK. You might have to get it from uh, America, but um, you want to pick up their... Um, their clove. I forget the, they have a name for their clove. But if you type in clove in their search, they only have one clove, so you'll have the right one. So you want to get that in a single shot. They have like one, two, or three shots. You want to get a single shot, and it's not the same kind of shots you have. It means for flavor, like how intense the flavor is. Get a single shot of 12 milligram. Okay. Um, then uh, you want to pick up some uh, vegetable glycerin and uh, propylene glycol. Mix that to 50%, 50-50, and I know it sounds like high for a dripper, but you need the, the PG to carry the flavor for this uh, juice. So you get 50-50 PG-VG, um, and you want to mix it in a ratio of 1 to 3. So if 25% of your juice is that uh, uh, clo heavenly clove from uh, Vaporfy, 75% of it will be your uh, PG-VG 50-50 mix, and uh, that will get you damn close to what I'm doing. So... Buddy, stop it. I apologize for the doggies. And uh, if anyone in chat is after a free sample of my tobacco juice, just uh, hit me up over Facebook. Um, my 10 mil test bottle should be in this week. So once they come in, I will get a batch mixed up and send them out. Uh, Mike had a comment about... You see, I, only meds I've had to take were Prozac. That shit's good with a bottle of Jack. My, my answer is... I have to take uh, Zoloft, and it's made me a cheap date, basically, because uh, people have heard this already. I'm repeating myself for a lot, but um, my family came to America in 1917, but, w but both sides are from Russia, so I have the vodka gene, and I, and, and I love my vodka, but with Zoloft, I literally can only drink about half of what I used to be able to drink, and I'm shit-faced. So it saves money on alcohol. I'm the same though with my medication sometimes. Uh, one of the tablets I have to take now is quite popular um, in the States as a street drug now. Uh, oh no. Oxycontin. Yeah. Yeah, well that's what I'm on as a painkiller. Um, yeah. I'm on 160 milligrams of it. Um, Man, I'm sorry you have to deal with that pain every day. And uh, even that doesn't deal with the yeah. pain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, in, in America what happens is a lot of the kids get hooked on painkillers young in high school and then uh, it gets expensive and so they switch over to heroin and uh, the sad thing is you know where my son is uh, buried about two months after my son died another boy was, is, was buried right next to him from the same high school he was a year ahead of my son and he died of a heroin overdose you know and uh, it's, a, it's a real problem here in the states You know, and I feel like people from my generation hear heroin and are like, dude, why the fuck did you even, you know, try it? Like, but, yeah, yeah you know, um, every generation. There's a lot of areas in the UK that have quite, quite bad heroin problems. Yeah. Taping Irish, I had a bad, uh, I used to race cars, I had a bad crash and was on that as well. And uh, for me, it was just my skin was crawling. They had to keep me on Valium just to keep me from scratching my skin off. That stuff is nasty. <coughs> uh, yeah, thanks for that, Bill. <laughs> Shane, Shane, how tall are you? 
um, six foot four on one side and six foot three on the other. Yeah, dude, so you're a big boy. Yeah. Let's let's see those bear paws. <laughs> you and we have a guy named Sammy Nitro in our Discord group. Sammy has giant hands. Like me holding like an eighteen six fifty. To, in his hand, it looks like I'm holding like 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 a triple A battery. There you go. <laughs> you know? There's an eighteen six fifty in my hand. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Here, size comparison, folks. <laughs> Eighteen six fifty. Yeah, there's, there's no wonder at the amount of people that say to me, "How do you build coils with hands that size?" Well, Sammy's a coil builder too. Mm. Sammy, Sammy Nitro makes amazing fucking coils, and he's got these giant bear paws. I don't know how you guys do it either. You know, it's crazy. Because, like, honestly, with like a lot of the intricate work on my mods, like. My hands are too big. Mm. If people, people might like this one. This is a mechanical box. The one night while I was, uh, we'll just call it inebriated, I came up with that idea. And it's just a couple of pieces of brass. Um, it's not channel. It's a bar, like brass bar, basically. And you just push the button and the vapors. Very oh, and speaking of mod maker in the UK... That's where those battery tubes came from inside this mod. Mm. Those are mod maker parts. They make they make great battery trays. Or not trays, I'm sorry, tubes. Yeah. Yeah, I've um I've got a mod that I've had custom made uh, by a guy called Mike Dakers, uh, abstract mods over here in the okay. UK. Um he's he's made me one as, as a gift basically. And um, Nice. Well, that's what I do with mine. I give my I give my mods out to folks who are, you know, friends and people that like, you know, people that are doing more than their fair share for vape advocacy, you know, trying to, you know, being selfless basically. So it's it's nice to be able to reward someone who's being sorry, being selfless with something like that, um, you know. And I, and I also I like I literally do not want to sell my mods because I don't want to get money involved. And then um, it will turn to shit for me because, you know, it's like, I feel like whenever you get money involved with anything, it turns to shit. So this is, you know, I make mods out of just, you know, pleasure. Yeah. Buddy, come here. Um, normally it's my dog, Apple, that's doing all the barking, but today she's actually being quiet. <laughs> so I'm lucky. That's all right, mine's asleep behind the laptop. Oh wait, you have two dogs. Yeah. Right? The older the older one which I did not see and I saw your younger puppy. Yeah, the younger puppy is the one that's asleep behind the laptop. Gotcha. Yes, serious separation anxiety. You can't go anywhere without him freaking out. No. Yeah, that's like itsy bitsy. Literally as soon it's as come as, as soon it's as either Michelle or Lee get up to go out the door, Tyson's going nuts, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> wait, you have a Michelle as well? Shane, hmm? I said, do you have a Michelle as well? A Michelle? The dog? Yeah. Oh, your dog is named Michelle? No, no, I was talking to that Michelle. Uh, My dog, every time even me or the happy moves. Yeah, it's fat people. I'm not, I'm not following this real well, am I? <laughs> no. Move it. Move it. Move it. I don't think I'd take heroin for pain, Grimmy. I think I'd rather have a nice bit of green, to be honest. Yes. Firm believer in green. Either green or some subida. <laughs> yeah, but in, in the UK, you guys have, like, uh, you guys actually have places to help, you know, helping people get off of heroin. Yes. You know, you have, uh, um, what's it called? That drug? Uh, methadone. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, you have methadone clinics. Yeah. No, this country instead, uh, we we apparently feel like it's the best thing to do for a pro someone with a drug problem is stick them in jail and make make them, you know, because in jail I'm sure they won't get any drugs at all. <laughs> you know, and, and again, it's a fucking industry. Yeah. You know, they 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 you know they've got they they they're banking on. It's fu you know what. I wish I knew there were, there was at least one country in the world that wasn't fucked up. But I don't know if there is. 
No, I don't think there is. To be honest, I think they've all got some form of corruption or... Yeah, and we see, it seems to be getting crazier every day. I feel like we're living in uh, that Mike Judge movie. Um, oh, God, now I can't remember the name of the Mike Judge movie. Essentially, it was about this guy that goes into space, comes back, you know, 500 years later, and the president is essentially Donald Trump. Uh, yeah. yeah, a fucking moron. I have the same sort of dog. He's called Rigby, and he's a pest, but we wouldn't swap him. Yeah, I, he's a loss. Everyone thinks he's a Shih Tzu, though. Iceland, maybe. I feel like the further north you get, the, the more sanity kind of sets in. You know, Norway, Sweden. Yeah, I mean, I know those sort of countries are a lot better than others. Yeah, but I'm sure they have their own issues, too. Yeah. I just don't know what they are. That's true, Bill. Every country is fucked up in its own way, even if it doesn't seem like it on the surface. Yeah. Yeah. But I do feel, and I could be wrong in this, but my gut tells me that, like... The world view is that Americans are completely fucking retarded. It's, I apologize for using the word in that way, but you know what the way I meant it. Um, but um, the th the truth is that there is a there's a there's a large portion of Americans that are not ignorant, but they're not loud. And the big dummies in our countries tend to be the loudest. So, and it's an embarrassment. Honestly, it is truly embarrassing. And and uh, I I am you know I would be. You know, with this opinion, people would say, "Oh, you're not, you know, you're you're not, uh, you know, being very patriotic." But I'm being more patriotic because I know what our country could be, mm. and it could be a lot better. And, and you know, I would like it to be that way. But not, I, let's just say I won't hold my breath. Yeah, I mean, considering considering the size of the country as well, you know. Yeah. A lot more scope over there than. Yeah, it blows my mind because like there's overcrowding in cities, and then like I have driven across this country. Mm. There is so much empty freaking space. Yeah. Empty. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. D vote. I I never vote for elections because. I think they're all full of shit. Yeah, it, I feel like voting is, you know, I, I would think that intelligent voting in the U.S. is voting for the, the least detestable candidate. Mm. <laughs> but they're all detestable. Yeah. You see over here, they just, you know, you get the pre-elections and everything and they're all out campaigning, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, blah, blah, blah. So, you, you know, you vote for them, they get in power, it never happens. <laughs> so, what's the point? What's the I point? know. I, mean, I know. The other thing I, that, that bugs me about this country is the fact that why we need a government and a monarchy. Why do we need both? Somebody, actually, wait, I think it might have even been someone on SAVS that explained it to me. You know. Because the Queen actually owns your country. Yeah. You know. Just be, like it's if you think about it, it's like it's like me owning like a piece of land and then having, you know, people come along and say, "Well, your land is now ours, mm. and we're and, and you're not in power anymore." Yep. Now, and look, that's a very ignorant American view of of the the monarchy in the UK. Yeah, but, but our, our monarchy is about as British as you are. <laughs> yeah, they're no, well, the German. Well, she's yeah, a German. Yeah, they're German and Austrian descent. They're not even blue. Oh, British. yeah. Oh, fuck. Because, you know, the fucking rich douchebags all married each other from various countries for, you know, to, for alliances, to keep the money where, you know, fuck them. God knows how bloody inbred our royal family is. Yeah, what blows my mind is that people in America go fucking ape shit for your, like, six-in-line prince mm. to get married. Yeah, there like, were people over here from America just to watch them ride through the bloody town. Like, like, do they not, do they not understand that, that... We were the bad colony that separated from the UK. <laughs> like, you know, we were about as anti-monarchy as you could get. Mm. And and now it's like whatever, whatever. You know what, people, learn your fucking history. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Village, I don't vote. I don't Irish, I agree, a hundred percent, buddy. However, I do draw dicks on my voting slips. Let them know what I think of them. Mm. More like it. 
I mean, <laughs> t to be fair, I suppose Prince Harry is probably the nicest out of the monarchy over here <laughs> of what we've got. Um, we, we would call that the, the least douchey. Yeah. I mean, some Even of the, if he doesn't look like his dad and looks like the person that his mother was supposed to have had an affair with. Yeah, very well, much so. That that's why it, it was such a big thing for Americans, because it was Lady Di? It's her, her son? Yeah. Like, you think if it wasn't Lady Di's son, it wouldn't have been so big? No. I don't know. Because, like, you don't have weddings, like, normally for someone that far along in succession, do you? Yeah. Like, big, I don't mean weddings. Clearly, they get married, but... Yeah, royal weddings, any direct... Um, descendant of the Queen, so either like her son or her daughter or their her her kids' kids, um, her grandkids. Then it would be a, a national thing. Gotcha. Although that wedding has got to be the most down to earth royal wedding I've ever seen. Yeah, but how much, how much did that wedding cost all us taxpayers? Wasn't it in the millions? <laughs> but then you've got to turn it back that he served his time. He, you know, he went out to Afghan. He did his bit. So why shouldn't he have something in return? Well, yeah. To be fair, I think he is one of. Out, out of all the royal family, he's probably the most deserving of a fantastic day. Yeah. I oh, think, that's good at least. I think he's the. He's the the last royal that I know of that actually did go into a um, a conflict zone, other than. Um, oh. Andrew, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like okay, so Prince Andrew I, I, I know that this. In the Falklands in the eighties. Yeah. It's becoming a little political, and I apologize for that, but, uh, you know, Donald Trump spent no time, you know, uh, criticizing one of our politicians who was imprisoned in, in Vietnam during his, his service. But meanwhile, Donald Trump got out of service because of, like, a foot spur or something, like, you know, dude, you can't even fucking, like, if you can't fight for your own country, don't criticize someone who did, whether they get captured or not, that's... And I'm sure that, you know, they, they went through hell in that process as well. Uh, Joe asked a question. Um, he says we need to get rid of the, the Electoral College in the U.S. And I, I agree, and the problem is this. When our country was founded, uh, our forefathers had enough brains to know that the general population is full of dumbasses. And so we had an Electoral College, so that even if the dumbasses were going to vote someone who would ruin our country... The Electoral College's job was supposed to be basically to filter out the people that would fuck us. But that stopped being what it was for a very, very, very long time. And now these electoral, ele electoralists simply vote the way that their popular vote is, basically making them useless. You know, so do we need an Electoral College? No. And, and, and when we did need one was this last election, because I don't care if you hate Hillary Clinton or not. I, I wasn't a supporter of hers either, but but when you compare Hillary Clinton to someone who has zero experience and is basically a fucking liar, the guy is a habitual liar. Like you know, you go for the, you go for the less shitty option, you know. And uh, I saw someone else mention that we need more than a two-party system, and amen to that. How many parties do you guys have that are legitimate and have a chance of of of, of winning over there? Um, three. That's no, a little bit better. We've got um, you've got Labour, Conservative, and then Liberal Democrats. What what would Labour be as far as uh, Liberal or Conservative? Are they in the centre? Uh, your two main ones are you probably Conservatives and, and Labour Party. The two main two major parties that usually are in. Power. Yeah. See, in, in America, our problem is that our Liberal Party is more conservative than most countries' Conservative parties. Although of, of recent years. Um, Has it gotten worse? I would say a few people in chat might find this quite controversial, but I'm going to say okay. it anyway. Um, UKIP has become a much more um, capable party, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, in in what they're doing. Um, they've, they've gained a lot more support over the last few years. Yeah, but I do see a wave across the world of just nut jobs. Oh yeah, you know, coming into power. It's like this fucked up shit. So about the only thing that we can, you know, it's like when you sit and think about these big things like that, it's just depressing as hell. So you know what? I think about vaping, and what can I do to keep vaping legal? What can I do to keep vaping, you know, something that is you know easily accessible to someone who wants to get off the stinkies? Mm. Um, 
And uh, with all the problems in the world, I cannot believe that vaping is even an issue. No. 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 But uh, but it is, and and uh, it's sad. It really is. You know, uh, I, I feel like the UK was probably the first ones to come out with that. I think it was that big report from your Royal College of Physicians saying that it was at least 95% yeah, percent safer. Levels, yeah. yeah, I mean, the first reports we had in America were funded by, and that's the thing, you always have to look, look at a report, who funded that report, mm. you know? Don't just say, oh, well, I read it on the internet, it must be true. Yeah, I think, but, um, but I think, most, I think that, that, that the report of the Royal College was a complete independent one as well. Um, I don't think yeah. it was funded by anyone. Exactly. Yeah, we've had a lot funded by, you know, uh, nefarious um, <laughs> entities, let's let's say that, yeah. that, that, that come out and say vaping is worse and blah, 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 which is, of course, bullshit, but, yeah. you, you know. Yeah, quite a lot of the studies and that over there have been funded by a, a company with the initials of PM. Uh, the guy with dreads. Uh, flavors are getting blasted right now. Uh, San Francisco in California has outlawed flavors mm. uh, other than tobacco, which is so fucking stupid because I know very few people who actually vape tobacco all day. Yeah. Um, the one and, uh, in New York failed to get through. Didn't that it? did fail, yes, yeah. thank God. Yeah, that one failed. Uh, I think there's uh, another one in... I don't know. It's, about, it's a lot of reactionary folks that don't know vaping. The people that, that are, you know, doing this are, A, again, who are, they're being paid by Big Tobacco or Big Pharma, and the people that are, you know, being little fucking, uh, you know, sheep or lemmings, you know, all they think of vaping is pot. They don't even know that vaping isn't weed. Yeah. They don't know that vaping isn't tobacco, like, isn't actual tobacco, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's strange how, how so many people automatically associate vaping as, as weed and I, I don't know where and believe me there's nothing fucking wrong with, with weed I'm I'm the last person in the entire universe <laughs> to say anything about that mm. but but I mean you know the image is basically a high school kid with a vape pen like a like a um oh god damn it like an ego yeah. Like an ego style battery with you know like a a little you know weed vape on it, and that's what they think vaping is. They have no clue what's going on. So I think one thing that that the vaping vaping in general, I feel like we are failing in educating the people that don't vape. Um, I think that could help us a lot if we could if we could educate and let them know that we're not talking about the same thing. That guy with dreads, which is Ryan, says, but does that include flavor concentrates? Uh, not yet, no. But they, can't, but they can't sell it in a store. Like, so let's say you live in San Francisco and you wanted to get, like, your flavors. You can still mail order that stuff, but you can't go to, like, you know, a vape shop and buy flavors. So it's more like, it basically, the people that are living and working in San Francisco trying to make a living in a very expensive area, they just fucked, basically. So it's, it's, the, it's the vape shops in San Francisco that are going to suffer the most from this because people are still going to get their flavors from mail order. Yeah. You know, and they're not opening people's packages to check and this and that. So it's it's really it's it's the poor the poor folks that have a vape shop in San Francisco, they're fucked. Yep. You know, but no one cared about them no. when they were passing that. All it's going to do is close down businesses, really. Yeah, yeah, and it's going to hurt us. It's going to it's going to hurt the everyday person. Not. I mean, because you know, I would say most most vape shops' bread and butter is, is juice sales. Yeah. Hands down. Um, it's the product that contains the most markup for the vape shop owners. Um, yeah. And it's I mean, we have a lot. We have some taxing issues here. Uh, you know, like my my state was taxing uh, vape products at forty percent, which is like a highway robbery. Mm. Um, and what they what the vape shops did to make it pal palatable was that they basically shared the cut. You know what I mean? Uh, so we didn't have to get so screwed. But uh, I think that was actually just overturned. Thank God. But I don't mind paying extra taxes for my vaping. I know that they make a lot of money from cigarettes, and without that money, there's a lot of uh, you know counties, states that that ha are going to have financial issues. So if you need to tax the vape gear, then tax the vape gear, but stop trying to outlaw it. Mm. Same thing for pot. Make it legal and, and tax it. <coughs> Done. Yeah. Problem I'm... solved. But, but, you know what? I should run for fucking president. Yeah, I, I can't ever see ever see weed being legalized over here. Can't ever see no. it. No, but 
there's so many medicinal purposes that it could be used for oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, we have medicinal pot in my state, but what's fucked up and stupid is in the U.S., instead of passing, like, so I understand that certain states in our country need laws that are just for them because, you know, whatever the circumstances are, but when it comes to something that is literally a life-saving medicine to some people, you don't, you should not have it by the state law, you know, because we have states in the U.S. that are, you know, recreationally uh, legal, we have states like Pennsylvania where I live which are medicinally legal, um, but it should not be a state-by-state -state thing. You know, it should be a right. It should be a right to fucking pull something out of the ground and smoke it. Yeah. yeah. No. I mean, at the end of the day, it's something that doesn't actually physically cause any harm to a person. Yeah. Um, you know, the other thing I've noticed that's really interesting to me is among the vaping community. Look, I'm speaking to a couple of people from the UK. We share something in common. We share the love for vaping. And even though we may not share our necessarily our political or religious views, whatever, we all seem to be able to get along and find a middle ground. Yep. And it's almost a model for the way that the rest of the population should be. Just mm -hmm. accept that not everyone's going to agree with you. Respect their opinion as long as they respect your opinion. And you know. That's it. I mean, you know, everyone's entitled to an opinion of you know of whatever, but it doesn't stop you being friends with someone because they have a different opinion. Yeah, You know, if, exactly. if we all had the same opinion on everything, the world would be a very, very boring place. Yeah. You know, it, it's nice to have different opinions and debate those different opinions yeah. in a friendly manner. You know, I mean, it, 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 us, it, us fighting with each other, the only thing, the only people that helps is, is like, you know, the, the ultra-rich and I swear to God, it's like, you know, from their, their little, you know, rooftops looking down at us fighting with each other. They love that shit. So fuck them. Don't give them what they want. Mm. Man, I sound like a total nut job today. Even more so than normal. No, it makes total sense. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're all human. We yeah. all believe the same. We just have different opinions, and that's how it should be. Because, like Shane said, if we all had the same opinion, what would you do? Yeah, we all had a mom. Exactly. We all had a dad, yeah. whether that dad was a fucking, you know, vile of sperm at a, at, a, at, a, at a sperm bank, but, you know, we all come from the same fucking place. I was watching something yesterday, like, when I, when I, when I want to fall asleep, I turn on documentaries because they put me out like a light, and I was watching something about blue eyes, and apparently everyone with blue eyes is a distant cousin to each other. Like, everyone that has blue eyes is from the same source, which I thought was just, like, mind-blowing. Well, that's great. I have six kids. Half of them have blue eyes and half have brown. Well, that doesn't mean you're all going to have it, obviously, but... Yeah. You know what? Your siblings are related. They're all related to each other. Yeah. Captain Obvious over here. That's very true, D-Vapes. The rich can afford to do anything they want, regardless of law. Fuck the rich. At the end of the day, most of the rich... You know, in society these days, the rich just get richer and the poor keep getting poorer. Yeah, and we um, keep fucking rolling over and letting them do it. Yeah. You know? These fucking idiots that voted for Trump. Trump's not poor. That man's never been poor a day in his life. He's never had any fucking needs. Dude, but yet he's getting coal miners and people that are living in, in fucking squalors to follow him. And, and, man, what fucking drug are they getting? Because I want some. <laughs> And, and Irish has actually made a very... Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I was just typing vaping Irish, absolutely. Yeah. Because, yeah, I completely agree. Why don't you read it? You're saying something very sane, but your insane society makes you think that you are the insane one for differing. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Damn right. Yeah. Vaping Irish, is, it, is, my, is my attitude towards government and people, is that, is that an inflection upon the amount of uh, Irish uh, friends I have? Possibly. Lou Ferengo, man has no business sense either. He's bankrupt four companies that he's run. Yeah, yeah like he's wow. like, I'm a good businessman. He's a horrible businessman. Lou's in the house. That's terrible. He literally was a billion dollars in debt. A billion dollars. And the banks decided to bail him out because his name was worth more to them than his debt. You know, this, this is not a fucking good businessman. This is not a good negotiator. The guy's a moron. Years ago, many years ago, he did... An American version of The Apprentice, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. 
And it was just... We have a fucking reality star running our country right now. We oh, it, Idiocracy. That's the name of the movie by Mike Judge. Hey, check it out if you can. Because oh, we are living you know, in idiocracy. Peter, who does The Apprentice over here, if he uh, took over, we'd be well in pocket. Yeah, but again, I feel like the, the, the baseline uh, intelligence in the UK is is probably about 100 IQ points higher than here. The thing is, I think the difference with Alan Sugar is he's an intelligent person. Yeah, yeah. That, he's that's actually, my point. You know, he made his money from inventing something, creating something that was quite revolutionary. Um, whereas Trump's just a dick. <laughs> is it Lou Ferrigno? I yeah. keep thinking of Lou Ferrigno, like, like the, the, yeah, the Hulk. It is, it is Lou Ferrigno, like the Hulk, yeah. Okay. When he comes here, I'm taking the day off work to throw rocks at his motorcade. <laughs> anyway, Lou, what, what are you doing over here? Is a, is a Black Cat's show finished? So you thought you'd pop over and see me? I'm assuming that's not the real Lou Ferrigno. No, no. <laughs> That'd be cool if it was. Just don't get mad. <laughs> don't be hulking out on us. Oh, well, everyone upsets J.A.'s anyway, so I shouldn't worry about it, Lou. Yeah, that's that's really easy to do. Yeah, he's such a fucking snowflake. Yeah. Just tell me, Miss Leg Day. Yeah. Miss Leg Day, you missed everything fucking day. See, in America, they call me the uh, snowflake for my views. Like, do I sound like a fucking snowflake to you? No. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 you know, this is what Vaping Irish was saying. You know, they, they, they make the same ones out to be the insane ones. Yeah. Oh, fuck them. Fuck this shit. They can continue living in their little bubble of what they think reality really is. Yeah, and it's a bubble. Yeah, it, it doesn't take much to upset him, though, in my opinion... Mr. Hayes is just a, a disrespectful <coughs> cock. <laughs> like, yeah. it's simple. I have no respect for the bloke. I don't know the man, so I will wait to pass judgment. I but... don't know him, um, but... This will automatically make you dislike him. He took the piss out of somebody with a mental health problem. While they were going through a, a bad they bout of depression. Yeah. Dude. You literally, you know what, this is a message for Jay Hayes, not that he's watching, but if he does. Dude, just understand this. If you are going to shit on someone who is in the throes of depression, you literally could lead to their suicide. I, I, I shit you not, because you know what, when you're at that stage, it does not take much to push you over the edge. Okay. So, you know what, even if you, even if you, in your heart of hearts, want to be an asshole, try not to be one. Yeah, and the, 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 I think the worst thing he was doing is he wasn't just taking the piss, he was he was laughing about it and no. mocking the guy. Alright, right, that's fucked up. That is very, and very fucked up. He, he didn't do it uh, behind closed doors, he did it publicly on a live YouTube live stream. We've got, I don't know how many people were on there, a lot. Yeah. That's, they know it. Like, do do do, say what? Right. You a health problem, let's go crying to mommy. Mm. Yeah. And then just kept sitting there going, Oh, sad panda. What a fucking asshole. Are you serious? Mm. No. Yeah. I don't, is the video still up or did he take it down? I think it got taken down. I believe. Man, that's just wrong, dude. That is just wrong. He literally ripped into him for about over an hour. Yeah, about an hour. I tell you what, Matt, if Jay Hayes came to the UK, I don't think he'd get out of the UK. Well, he, he might, but I think he'd be getting out in a box. Hold him fucking responsible for that shit. Hey, freedom of speech is not the same as not being a douchebag. Mm. It's like, I mean, one of his uh, favourite things to do at the minute is, um, he's, he's, he's obviously got quite a lot of patrons, and... Thanks, says it's still up. It's still up, is it? Apparently, if you go on Jay Hayes' channel, apparently it's still up. There's actually oh, wow. a whole... As soon yep. as this is over, I'm going to go to that video and I'm going to hit the dislike button, and I hope everyone else does as well. Um, oh, we, we all got booted out. We were all in there, and we were all yeah. sticking up to one person, and he had a team of moderators that were just kicking everybody out of chat that tried to defend the person. Mm. Numerous accounts we logged into, and every time they just booted you straight out of the chat. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I don't. You know, I don't have the words. And I mean, what kind of person does that? He's that disrespectful, and obviously has no respect for his patrons whatsoever. Because of late, what he's been doing is 
in other live streams uh, that have had Super Chat turned on. He's been donating to the Super Chat, like, large amounts. Oh, he, like, he donated like, uh, $200 on Friday night on the vape still. Yeah, and that's all yeah. from his patrons' money. Which uh, I John, think is very disrespectful sorry. to the fact that, you know, your patrons are, are donating money to you. You don't yeah. donate that. You're supposed to use it for content and for them. Exactly. Not to like, back not back to like wave your dick around. You know, like look at all the money I have. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did he not have Super Chat running the day he did that video and he was getting money for ripping the piss out of him? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Don't people don't support that kind of behavior. We have to make the world the way that we would like it to be, and and the only way we can do that is by not supporting when people act that way. You know, John Breen, uh, yeah, PTSD here too, buddy. It sucks. Yeah, Biscuit, if you're, if you're still in here, mate, do your send a favour and fuck off. Because uh, you're not welcome in this in this room. Well, I, I luckily didn't see what he, what he had to say. Um, he put up, ah, ah, ha, 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 gay. Then he put, what the fuck is this bent shit, you lot of faggots. Hey, and hey, uh, if, if you're still in here, Biscuit, I am gay. I'm a lesbian. I like to lick vagina, and uh, I don't really give a rat's ass what you think, dude. So fuck off. That guy at the bottom left is my uncle. Do you know, I think I love Michelle. I just love how she just just does it as it is. It must be something in the look, name. Look, look. I, I haven't always been this way, but when you lose a child, you 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 learn perspective, and it's not a perspective oh, I wish upon I, anyone, but but you learn perspective, and that is. Love the people that you love, and let them know it all the time. And for haters and trolls, fuck off and die, dude. I really don't give a shit if what happens to you, man. Don't be an asshole. You want to get a troll? You don't want to be a trolly person and just to get a reaction, dude. No one likes you, man. You know what? Try saying something nice. Try saying, asking a question. Try being a fucking human being, and and we will be your friend. It's that fucking easy. Just don't be a douche. God damn, I'm in a ranty mood right now. I'm normally, like, funny, and I'm not funny at all right now. It I'm just aggravated. It certainly isn't science, is it? No. I've, I've always lived by the simple thing of treat others the way you wish to be treated. So yeah, the golden rule, people. It's not oh, if you've got nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. Yep. Done. You know, but, uh, but, but, you know, the thing is, what you just told me about Jay Hayes, that's, that's, that, that's taking it beyond that. That's callous. Yeah. That is, that is literally hurting, kicking someone when they're down, you know. And I don't know what kind of person does that. Well, we do know what kind of person does that. Mm. But it's hard not to get aggravated when I hear shit like that. Yes, say you ought to be quiet because you never say anything nice. You just call me Granny. <laughs> Good old Graham. <laughs> not quite a Granny. I've got how many days? Two weeks and. Through four days before she's due. Yeah, not long, not long. I'm on countdown. Yeah. If, if a granny can look like you look like, I know she's exactly what I said. She's gonna go from milf to gilf. Yeah. I'll be alright. I can push the pram around. They just think it's mine. It's okay. I can deal with it. Look, I don't want my daughter getting pregnant anytime soon, but I, I feel like I'm gonna enjoy the grandkids. You can give them back. Yes. Yeah. You can spoil them rotten, and then you can give them back, and they can scream and they can shout, and then we can go. That's exactly what you did I to me. I can finally do what my parents did to me, which is like loading up my kids with sugar and then giving them back to me. <laughs> like, yeah. like, thanks a fucking lot. Now I can't get them to sleep because you know my my, my son especially him and sugar it was like. Ah. You remember uh, Cornholio from Beavis and Butthead? Yep. My name is Cornholio. I need TV for my bunghole. That was David. That's your favorite quote, isn't it? Yeah, oh, I love I it. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Beavis. Uh, oh, God. Stupid. I am the Anton Holio. I need TP for my bunghole. Do you have TP? TP. TP? TP? <laughs> 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 Holy shit. Dude, you actually that kids were watching that the other day. That was crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> Oh, right now, I'm currently addicted to Rick and Morty, though. <laughs> I love Rick and Morty with a passion. And it's the best show to watch when you are high on life. Yeah. <laughs> I think my son's watched every episode that he can physically watch of Rick and Morty. 
It's great. I watch them over and over and over again because they're just. It's really actually <coughs> quite well written, you know. And uh, I just I love it. And I and I was able to download an an uncensored uh, version of it, so I don't have to listen to all the beeps and. You know, great. That was a fine dog. Sorry, guys. Why are you wearing my bra? I wasn't. <laughs> Information you didn't need to hear, but yes. I know your boobs are bigger than mine, but that's nothing to boast about. <laughs> oh, snap. What was that one? Fired. Oh, someone put, they, they just watched a film the other day. It's the bloke. Ain't you those boys who've been whacking off in my tool shed? <sighs> I, I do like the fact that that I find like I find that your the UK chat takes less shit oh, than yeah. the US chat. Yeah, the moderators on on UK lives tend to be pretty on on the ball. We can all do. Well, I don't even mean that. I mean like just the people in the group in general don't stand for that shit. Mm. I mean, I think. Pickle Rick. I think it was our was it our first show, Michelle, where we had that racist dickhead come in, wasn't it? What? No, it was our second one because we had Jules on. That's right, yeah. Our second show when Jules was on. Um, uh, Mama Vapes in chat. I mean, she's actually mixed race. And the guy was just being an idiot and everyone jumped straight on it. And that was it. They were gone. You see, that, like, you know what? That's, that's how the world should be. That's you know, a whole, that was a whole sexist thing, though, because all the comments were aimed at either Jules or me. Yeah. Oh, I would have let loose. But in saying that, did you see Red Fox's post? Someone commented on one of her videos, get your tits out. Mm. Dude, dude whoever, whoever said that to Red Fox, again, not that you're listening, but whoever said that, try saying that exact. If you think you, that saying something to another woman is okay, imagine yourself saying exactly those words to your mother. Yeah. And if you wouldn't say it to your mother, don't say it to someone else. <laughs> yeah, I can't live by that one, because I test my mother so <laughs> okay look look don't get me wrong my parents my parents try but <laughs> yeah, <I've, laughs> you know. I don't have any relationship with my parents at all I haven't had for yeah. what 15, I don't have a relationship with my siblings about 15, you know about 15 years since I spoke to my parents but, uh, yeah. I think I think Antoinette I think you might be watching the video not quite live because if you're just seeing the doggy, that was like ten minutes ago, I think. Yeah, yeah there is a bit of a there's a bit of a lag between stream yeah. and on the live. There's a doggy. There's my little, yeah. little stuggy. What can I do? <laughs> what? Tyson. I don't think it's gonna work, but let's try. Nina. Tyson. Nina. Nina. I'm no. calling my kitty cat. Nina. Nina. Hey, baby girl. Come here, sweetie. Come here. I love that my cat comes when I call her. Nina. Come here, baby. Nice. <laughs> yeah, very much agree there, Grimmy. Very much agree. Doesn't hurt to... Use your P's and Q's in any way, shape, or form. Oh, Vape cat! cat. <laughs> Tyson, Tyson's scared of cats. Tyson's Aww. scared of everything. You know, Tyson's what's doing? scared of his own farts. What's he doing? What's he <laughs> doing? <laughs> Goodbye. Go back to study then. Toss, toss. Yes, Mike, that dog can fart for England, and yes, I will actually agree with you for once, it is worse than you. Yeah. The other night, I think Michelle was going to be sick. Yeah. Oh, Not as good as the night he was over my shoulder with his back legs here and you actually heard it. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, kitty. Yeah, I think you're right there, Lee. I think Mike's still a uh, top farter. I don't know. This dog is rank. Especially if you give him a marrow bone. Oh, my days. The best is, like, you just crawl into bed, you get under your covers, you're all comfy, and then your dog rips rips one. And he does that every single night. Oh, man. The worst one is when he sleeps behind us on the windowsill, and you hear this little pssst, 
and then you feel this warm air go over your face. You're like, thanks for that. Oh, man, that is nasty. You're getting hot boxed by your dog. Yep. You're my baby, really, though, aren't you? You only come back to me because Daddy won't give you chocolate. I don't know, Antoinette. I think it should still be at the top. Um, the live chat. There's an iPhone. You've got three little lines that look like fucked up arrows. Mm. You press it, and then it comes up with live chat and top chat. Okay, there's a complaint. I wish it would default to live chat. Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, yeah cuz I find myself, sorry, I got like cat hair. <laughs> I got pussy hair in my mouth. <laughs> That's never happened before. <laughs> um I always have to switch to live chat and I and I forget 90% of the time, which is what yeah. I've done. I've already I've forgotten. <laughs> yeah, luckily when I'm doing the when I'm doing the live stream setting it all up, I have to pop the chat out of YouTube so I automatically see it and click it to live chat so that it comes through on the stream live. Yeah. Um, otherwise, if I didn't have to pop the chat out, I'd forget about it. Uh, right, well, we've overrun a little bit tonight, haven't we? Well, that went quick. Yeah, uh, Saint, Saint... Is that Cunty? Cunty? Saint Cunty McFuck? Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I snort. Oh my god, best name. It's the best well, YouTube it, 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 name ever, isn't it? Oh my god, in our, in our Discord group we have uh, Poon Sauce McNasty, which I I adore that name so much, but but that gives it a run for its money. I, I love that. Wait, and there was actually, I think I wanted to respond. Yeah, how you liking your new Dreamer? Oh, I, I love my Dreamer. Oh my god. So I did not buy this. Um, Stan, who makes these sent me a mod to repair for him, like it was just, I'm not going to name names because um, let's just say I was less than impressed with the build quality, <laughs> but but I, I did repair it, And but in the box that he sent me this broken atomized, or broken uh, mod in, he sent me a brand new black dreamer with a finish that's not coming off, it's, it's, it's holding up really well, it's got, man I just got coated, sorry, my cat is, is, she sheds twice a year like she molts, and she's molting, <laughs> I'm I'm covered. I'm covered in pussy hair. You just decided to sleep on me. Yeah, I was thinking the same, Grimmy. I think um, Biscuit is back in the on a different account for the looks of it. But Mike, Mike's mechs as always is straight up there with his with his hammer. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> Pinned me down. Looks so cute. I'm not allowed to move now, am I? So, uh, do we have any last minute questions? Is this. You said we were going yeah, over? If anyone's got any um, final questions, we'll run for a little bit. Don't forget bit to smash that like button, folks. You're, you're, you know, you're watching something here for free. Everyone's taking time out of their day. All we ask for is, a, is to hit a like. Yeah. That's it. And it's, it's pretty easy. The, it's the like buttons now that make a big difference with the analytics and everything. And if you hit the dislike button, hit it twice. I had to think about that a second. I'm a little slow. Yeah, I don't get the point why people need to troll. It's because they've got no life. They've got nothing better to do with their time. And they're just sad, pathetic little tits that sit there behind their computer. Well, they do they say... They have to be. Try not to be an asshole. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Michelle. They said, if you've got haters, you've obviously made it. Yeah. Let the haters hate. <laughs> yeah. No, Saint. You're not allowed to hit the like button twice. No, just the dislike one. I, I'm telling you, that name is going to be in my head for days. Saint Cunty McFuckoff. And cows, don't get me started on what came first, chicken or egg, because that will just go around in circles for hours. The egg. Whatever mutation got it to a chicken had to be born first. So that's, it's the egg. That's very true, Bill, but uh, we have to consider mad at her because she's got kids for school in the morning yeah poor old me but in the sun Scottish Muppet 
I might be fine because I won't have to get up early. Do you do you blokes like like diss on each other for being like Irish or or or, or Welsh or whatever? Yeah. Why? It's just one of those things. It's just a bit of friendly banter. Yeah. Between, That's all it's um, friendly. I think a lot of it stems from uh, the Rugby Six Nations Championship because it is literally England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales that play against each other. So it's. That's right. You can is just the Isle of Man its own thing, or is that within another? Uh, no, the Isle of Man is classed as its own country. But no, here no, people. No, the Isle of the Isle of Man. Yeah, the Isle of Man's its own country, isn't it? The Isle of Wight's not. The Isle of Wight's under under UK, isn't it? I'll be down there. I believe. Nina. Where's Pete when you need him? <laughs> He's gone to bed, probably. Yeah. But no, people will, will literally dislike for anything over here. I, for instance, I have somebody who doesn't like me because of my voice. Yeah. Why? Because <laughs> voice is fine. Voice, my voice is annoying. Oh, please, get over yourselves, people. Her voice grates on them. We're all racist in the UK, but color is no problem. <laughs> That's true. That is true. You, you, you got, you've got quite a few up on us. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah, Don't I, jump. I knew it was but I knew it was part of the UK, might be Isle of Wight, but I... Is the Isle of Wight really part of Hampshire? Yeah. Because it's in Portsmouth, you dickhead. So I'm assuming this chicken and egg thing is a big thing for your for your uh, chat folks. Yeah, I think we must be liking that one. <laughs> it's, it's just the big question, isn't it? Without, without the egg, you don't get the chicken, and without the chicken, you don't get the egg. Well, that's. The, but my point is that what if it wasn't a chicken when it laid the egg? What if it? What if the 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 egg was the mutation that got it to being a chicken? Mm. So then, technically, the egg was the first chicken, because yeah. beforehand it was called a chicken. <laughs> they hadn't quite become chickens yet. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'd never. I'd never thought of it that way, actually. Well, it's, that's because stoners are really good at the deep questions. Yeah. yeah. But but as far as like what what we're doing right now. I guess I've not been a been a stoner for so many years. <laughs> what are you growling at? <laughs> You're just sitting there growling at nothing. <laughs> you know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one saying. It was a duck egg. But it didn't want to be a duck, so it came out a chicken. <laughs> well, slightly. <laughs> okay. Well, we're not doing the two cows joke. Okay. Is that why it's chicken cross the road? <laughs> Is the world round or flat, Joe? Are you fucking serious, dude? <laughs> I I have seen websites with the flat earthers, and I uh, it, it, it literally, if your brain could hurt. <laughs> It hurts. Yeah. You know, like it's just really, dude. Flat. Apple, stop it. Apple. My dog Apple likes to uh, bark at every flea that farts in the world. <laughs> it's her thing. No, my my dog just sits and growls when my um auntie who died a few months ago decides to pay a visit. Oh well, yeah. And then and then. You guys have a lot of ghosts over there, don't you? Yeah. 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 Especially in my house, they they levitate towards me. It's shame that seen it where I've actually yeah. faked. It looks like it's hit a brick wall and it just slides down. Yeah, that we was, is we were massively a, fucked up. We were sat on a video call, weren't we? Yeah. And she literally exhaled the vapor and it like it hit a wall and just stopped and went boom, straight out. Okay. It was fucking freaky. I would have to move, <laughs> but I guess if you're in the UK, you're just going to move to a different pair of ghosts. I'm more. so used to it. I'm so used to it. It's everywhere we've met, everywhere we've lived, isn't it? Well, Literally, everywhere we've yeah. lived, we've had some sort of spirit presence. Uh, Antoinette on YouTube. I am. I just look up Michelle Lynn Dull Dine. You'll get to my channel. The link is there's, there's no beeping things on it though. Just FYI, it's all just music. I see I dead batteries. Oh. My cousin is actually a paranormal investigator in Australia. Really? Unfortunately, on my mum's... Did you get that comment by Matt? I see dead batteries? <laughs> like I see dead people? 
That was good. Yeah. You are welcome, Antoinette. The chat just went a bit quick then. <laughs> Still getting used to these new glasses. Oh, Why D vapes? Ghosts exist. Just accept it. I'm very spiritual. It's in my mum's side. Go way back on my mum's generation. There's we just every female on my mum's side has been. You can look at it as a gift, or you can look at it Sensitive. as a gift. Yeah. Um. The first song on my album, and again, I'm gonna I'll Dropbox you guys the album, but the first song is called "The Visit," and uh, I'll just just listen to it, and you'll know what it's about. I don't bury the meanings in my songs; it's right there on the surface. But it actually, it's a true story. It really happens. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, you see, the way I, the way I see it with with ghosts and that and, and and things is, you know, you can kill the physical, but you can't kill the non-physical. <laughs> The spirit. So everybody has emotions and feelings and a soul. And energy. So I how, mean, how can you kill that? That can't die. In the well, words of... I like to think I can kill anything, though. Mm. Colin Fry once said, what if this is not life? It isn't. Dude, okay. Once you have passed, question. that is when your life begins. Correct. Mm. We are currently living in a dream right now. This is None of this is real. You're not watching me. I'm a figment of your imagination. And... Uh, uh, great, great, great imagination there, buddy. Thanks for thinking me up. No, we've been ghost hunting a few times, haven't we? Yeah. To the point where we were, there was a six foot wall and somebody got thrown over the wall, but for some reason my husband couldn't get over the wall. We've got it, we've got it all on video. We've also got it on video when we got back. I don't know if you have them in America. We have like the old puffer jackets that are made of like a satin. Material. Yeah, we have them. And we got home, and our friend took his Your coat and man jackets. cuts all down his arm. Holy crap! But not a single mark on the on the jacket itself. Yeah, it's, uh, it's strange when, like, the way I see it, like with, with you know, with with the soul and everything is. Like, I mean, this will probably make people in chat laugh, but. When I, when I was a young lad, when I was sort of five, six years old, um, my parents would take me out somewhere in the car, and it would be the first time that I'd ever been to this place. But I, on the way there, I could be describing where we was going to a tea without ever being there, and then to top it off, I used to describe it in like a past tense yeah i would say that um i'd been there when i was a little girl so uh yeah i think <laughs> past life yeah. yeah my granddad manifests into a green orb and i used to say to my mom there's this thing floating around in the hall and it keeps turning the light switches on and off and so, like, my imagination yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna end with a with a little bit of a story, and uh, the, the, I it, it, well I'll just explain it. Um, there's a thing called Duffy's Cut, which you can look up online. Duffy's Cut is about a block that direction from where I live. I live in a new a new home, which I am moving out of because my son died here, and I don't I don't have his ghost. I feel like he visited me and and he, and he moved on. But uh, there are about 43 dead Irishmen buried. Uh, that direction. It was from when they were making the railroad in the 1800s and somebody came down with a disease and I don't remember what it was but they basically killed off all the Irish people so they would not infect the Chinese people that were working on the railroad and it's like a mass murder grave back here of Irish folks that are just pissed off so I was driving down my street one time to get to my house and something ran in front of the car and I like slam on the brakes and there's nothing fucking there and that, that freaked me the fuck out. We've had that very here. There was a girl that was abducted, a young girl. who we went out in the middle of the night wearing just a white nightdress. And we were travelling back from his mum's one day. And we drive and his mum's like, shall we stop and give her a lift? And Lee was like, no, no, no. Carried on going. And the minute we got past and looked back, nothing there. That's, that's scary as shit. And where, where I live, you've got a lot of old... Old, a lot of lot of history here. Um, 
there's, there was an old monastery and stuff like that and in the house that I grew up in um, and all around that estate there used to be lots of sightings of uh, monks and things walking around and <coughs> I can remember as a kid I woke up one night to a hooded figure sat at the bottom of my bed that was quite a good one that's yeah, yeah. okay Antoinette you think that's a good one my granddad passed when I was 18 months old. I barely knew the man. My dad had a breakdown when his dad died and he never actually saw where his ashes were scattered. About seven years ago, we decided to visit the crematorium and by this time, his mum had also passed so we couldn't ask her where they were. We were walking around and I froze to the spot and I went, granddad is here and my dad said, don't be so bloody stupid. You haven't got a clue where he is. You didn't even come to the funeral. And I stood in the spot and I went, granddad is here. He went to the office, got the records, and the lady actually walked up, crossed over and said, see with that young lady standing, that's where his ashes were scattered. Holy fuck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, this is a vape, an inside joke for vapes, still. Wow. Yeah. But um, that is, that's crazy. Holy shit. I can yeah. tell him be in the house before anybody else will tell. The dog will notice afterwards. All right, I'm going to make you guys think I'm... Look, actually, you know what? Fuck it. You already think I'm fucking crazy, so that's fine. Um, I feel like m the women in our family have had that same kind of trait. Not not, not like that, per se, but like I I dreamt... When I was really little, I thought the space shuttle was like the coolest thing, and I had a dream that the space shuttle exploded, and then and I woke up the next day to watch the space shuttle take off, and it exploded. And I've had shit like that happen to me, but it's usually dreams for me. You know, but you you picked up that you, that 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 your granddad was like that's crazy, that's wow. Yeah, I can also do the thing where I have dreams and then six seven years down the line it'll happen. It's just it's pretty. You, you can, like I said, you can look at it as a gift or you can look at it as a curse. Mm. Just depends on which way you use it. Yeah. Yeah. But we well and truly have overrun by half an hour. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Well, we'll give it two minutes, so we'll do two minute warning. We'll go till half past and then we shall call it a night. Um, yeah. can, I, can I give a plug? You can, feel, feel free. Um, if, if you guys would like to see me maybe less political and, and maybe a little bit more messed up, uh, tune over on YouTube to the uh, Vaping with the Omis. Um, I'm gonna. I'm a guest panelist on that today, and we are interviewing uh, my friend uh, Jennifer Berger Coleman, who is a big vape advocate here in the U.S. LJBC. Yeah, and uh, it should be it should be a good show. So uh, if 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 you're around, and I know it's getting really late over there in the that UK, show but is it, was it one o'clock here that comes on? Um, it starts here at. Give me one second, okay. That's the one that Chris was on, one it, the other week. So. I think it's your time, 12, midnight. I think it starts at midnight. What time is it there right now? It's 11.30. I think, I, think, I think at midnight, either that or we meet at midnight online, and then, but it, it's, it's not too long from now, let's yeah. just say that, and, and assume that Michelle can't do math right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be watching that one then. Um, I'm, well, I quite often watch Vaping with the Omers. Because um, I'm friends with James anyway, Mr. Franklin. Oh, Mr. Franklin's getting the next Dole Dime mod. Oh, jealous. But we all love James Franklin. Do you want to see James Franklin's mod? Oh, go on then. Tease me. So, uh, I mean, it's uh, the majority of the work that goes into my mods is, is like basically slowly grinding away at the tins. Mm. Uh, so the first thing you do is you have to, it's going to reflect, I apologize, folks. It's You have to grind off the lip Yeah. so that it'll... You know, it'll stand up, yeah. um, and then and then the hole at the top, and then the corresponding hole to match that, which I just do by eye. Um, so it's, this is how my mods start, but this is uh, this was the only work I got done this weekend on it, and I spent hours mm. because I was doing an, another couple ones as well. But they take a long time to make these suckers. Yeah. They're worth it. They're worth it. They're, just, they're something that's, uh, that I see as very unique. They're, they're something that, you know, 
you see one of your mods and you automatically know it's a dull dime. Yeah, but there's like nothing keeping anyone from making their own Altoids. I mean, but oh, what no, I would say is this. Just don't start making an Altoids. Practice soldering. Mm. Practice cutting up tin. Practice grinding tin, because tin, tin is thin and it, and it rips. If yeah. you get a little too aggressive, it will tear, and now you have to start over. Yep. Um, but uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Especially her pin-up one. That just pulls out the 1950s girl in me. Mm. Yeah, I, I, we, we, we share, as far as our favorite, we share that. Yeah. yeah. I, I love this one. I just yeah. love the look of it. It's you know? cool, that one. And then, and I, but I do, I do like my Curious George. Yeah. That's my son's favorite cartoon, Curious George. You see, I, I, I like the, art, the artwork from the sort of, that sort of you want to see, I'm making myself a PWM box. <laughs> the, the Abominable Snow Monster. AKA Bumble. Right then, guys, that's it. That's the end of the show. So, first of all, I'd like to thank Michelle from Dull Dime. Absolutely fantastic having you on. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm sure uh, you'll be joining us again sometime, no doubt. Anytime. And thanks to my lovely co host up there, Mrs. The Michelle. Other Michelle. Or is it. Or is it oh, okay. Oh, the same as the name, we're all lovely. All of us are lovely. Oh, it, um, hang on, get it right. It's Big Boy Coil's vape wife, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Vape wife. <laughs> and uh, thanks to everyone in chat, and thanks to everyone for joining us. So, uh, until 9.30 next Monday, we shall see you then. Until then, take care, everyone. Ah! Night. Good evening, goodbye. Are we uh, off? We'll be in a second. Ooh, then I'm going to wait a second then. I can't see, I can just hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs>